It's not a war on guns, it's a war on personal freedom. Please keep that in mind at all times. Thank you. Today, we were deemed high risk by a hostile entity known as Square. We will never quit. These fucking pieces of shit. I'm going to show them what the fuck I think. Welcome to Square. For support, please press 1 or stay on the line. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. Fuck off. You fuck. Hopefully. <laughs> is, your, is your mic on? Yeah, it's on. All right, so today on the Cigars of Our podcast, tonight, 11 on Unsolved Mysteries. 11. We're going to talk about some controversial shit, some dramatic shit that took place over the past few days. We, it's all shit. We have been deemed a hostile force. What, uh, what are you doing? Extremely hostile. Don't, I don't, wish I could clip that off. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, we were deemed uh, high risk by a certain company. By an organization. So today we're going to talk endless shit about them after this freaking freight train outside quits backing the fuck up. All right, that worked. So today, we have some shit to talk about. Have a seat, Ryan. I think we're good. All right. All righty then. So, Cigars of Valor, a terrorist organization, according to Square. Yeah. Actually, we probably shouldn't slander their name. Fuck it. Um, so, I don't understand how, how, how we could literally use them for like over a year and then they drop A year us. and a half and then we get dropped. Because we violate being, their terms. For being high risk. Yeah. Like what is high risk? Uh, Maybe it's the podcast. Yeah, but we're not selling the podcast. They're not processing transactions for the podcast, so that should be irrelevant. So today we are celebrating. We've graduated. We are celebrating as a high-risk organization. Yes. So this is going to be a high-risk video. We're going to skate the edge a little bit. If you like to be risky. Like smoking groovy blues. Um, all right. <clears throat> so we, we want to be risky too. Let me show you something real quick. Sorry. Would you like a broadleaf, the ACB? Yes. Please take it. Thank you. You know, how can I help? This cigar was deemed one of the best cigars that we provide. Correct! Luckily, within this hostile organization, this blend was majestically found. Mm -hmm. And it has turned out to be exquisite. It's probably one of our top selling cigars. Yeah. Probably the top selling. So. I would say. Here's, here's the deal. Um, the lighters. Cutter. Cutter. Don't hurt yourself. I'll try. You know, since you're being a smart ass, here's your favorite lighter. What are you going to say? Where are we, Ash? Oh, yeah. 
Sorry. <laughs> I'll just do it on the dinosaur's mouth. <laughs> so yeah, we got an email. Was it yesterday or the day before? Or Square? Yeah, yesterday. We got an email from Square yesterday stating that they had disabled our account because we were deemed high risk. And they said they sent a hitman to our location. But the thing is, when you don't put a valid address, the hitman has no right. Has no idea where to go. Yeah. yeah. And then you block like you know uh, the location permissions on the app. Mm -hmm. Works perfect. Remember that. So yeah, we uh, were dropped by Square because we're considered high risk uh, due to the online tobacco sales. Uh, which I don't know why it took them over a year to figure out that we sell cigars online. It's not like our name says it. Yeah. You know, if we did have cigars in our name, maybe it would be uh, a little bit easier to like see. Right. I mean, maybe we could be more transparent next time. I think so. I think so. So we're talking to a new pro. We, I mean, we, we can still process payments on our website that's no issue yeah like all that's fine yeah we're fine we uh, quickly found a provider that likes us yeah we found a provider that is actually easy to work with and not chicken shit like square yeah and i don't care what you say square send all the deceased and desist you want we're not going to stop you know how can i help you You know, I was thinking about something. We should let that go into a, a lawsuit. Do it. <coughs> no, so, no, for them, so that uh, we get the publicity. I oh, know. Well, and uh, you know, we could also go after them for loss of revenue. They didn't give us any warning, nothing like that, any way to fix it, any way to tell us what we need to change. They just dropped us. I think we're going to find one of their executives, and we're going to let we're going to speak our minds. Absolutely. So, why don't you tell the the audience that doesn't exist what we got going tomorrow? Yeah. Well, we have an event for people that like us at El Dorado and McKinney, five p.m. to nine p.m. Correct. What? Nine. It's going to go later. Yeah, nine ish. It's like a Roger from American Dad. He said, Is it like a hard eight or can I roll in around noon? <laughs> <laughs> is it a hard nine? I want to say that to Kurt. Yeah, that's fun. I'm going to say that to Kurt. So, is it a hard nine? You're going to say that to him while you're there? Yeah, I'm going to say, So, is it like a hard night? Our hard nine, or can we like uh, stay until about midnight? And he's gonna be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Do it. Beautiful. This Fantastic. is such an exquisite Isn't cigar. It? Isn't it great? Mm -hmm. uh, so, before we lead into the segment that is the reason we brought this cigar with us, um, I wanted to provide a little bit of tobacco or cigar knowledge for everyone. Uh what are the three types of Connecticut leaves? Well, I only know two. Well, allow me to enlighten you. Okay. There's Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Connecticut shade. What's that? It's a shade grown Connecticut. And it's a Connecticut broad leaf. Yeah, what's a, what's a Connecticut shade? It's just, it's grown like any other tobacco, if you will, but it's grown under like a, a tarp uh, structure, if you will. So what? Like what, a transparent tarp structure. What is the difference on that? If I remember right, it changes the intensity level of the uh, leaf when it's grown under shade. Hmm. Um, I, I can't remember how. I haven't smoked a Connecticut shade in a very long time. Um, now the Connecticut broad leaf is just a Connecticut wrapper that's been fermented for an extremely long time. Really? Yes. And how long have these been fermented? Fermented, I couldn't tell you, but aged 
seven years. They don't ferment while they're aging? No, but that's part of the aging process, but uh, they roll these and then they sit in the aging room for God knows how long. Then they're sent off to be destroyed and dried up and smoked by idiots that don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Well, it's a good cigar. It is a great cigar. It is very good. So today we are smoking the ACE, the ACE. It's a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper with a Nicaraguan filler. Fantastic cigar. What the fuck are you pointing at? <laughs> Great cigar. It's a good cigar. And so the reason we're smoking this cigar today mm-hmm. is we had, at last week, um, if you watched it, doubt you did because no one watches this. Uh, we introduced a new segment called Badass of the Week. We got like two people that watch it. Yeah, maybe. Once a month. Sure. And last week we did <laughs> Arthur Simons. Yeah. Uh, Sun Tai Raid. This, but if you're not listening right now, like, and you just have us playing in the background, I really appreciate you just leaving us in the background. That's amazing. But listen up. Listen to this next piece about this next individual. Listen! <laughs> it's good. Travis put a lot of work into this. I did. I read books, watched documentaries, tracked people down, interviewed them. Yeah. yeah. Lemon meringue pie. For those of you that get that reference, you're awesome. And um, so. I'm afraid no one does, probably. No, they probably don't. <laughs> the person we're talking about is Charlie or Charles. Beckwith. Your dad? Oh, no. Charlie or Charles Beckwith. If you don't know that name, he's a legend in the words, legend to know him. in Special Forces history. He was in Vietnam. Find out where he lives and ask him questions. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> and most important about his career, creator of Delta. The counterterrorism you know, there, unit. There's something rattling around in my head with Delta and a certain cigar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like a cigar that we got is named after that. Yeah. So, for those of you that <clears throat> are too retarded to understand what he's saying, uh, this is the ACE, which Delta was later. It, the name of it changed to Army Compartmentalized Elements, ACE. That is why this cigar is named that. When did they change that? I don't, I don't know. I just know they did. Hmm. I don't know. But, so, Colonel, Colonel Beckwith, he's a colonel. A hmm. uh, little bit about him. He was Vietnam. He was Special Forces. Uh, he spent some time over across the pond with our British friends with the 22nd Special Air Service Regiment and uh, learned a few, quite a few things from them and took that knowledge, came over here and created Delta. And uh, it's, if, if there's two books I would like to recommend, hmm. uh, I'm gonna try to recommend books every time. Delta Force by Beckwith, it's his book. And then there's Inside Delta Force by Eric Haney. He was one of the original charter members of Delta. Uh, he went. He was one of the first selection groups. He, he went through it and got into the organization. Fantastic books, plethora of knowledge. Um, it, he'll, he'll post a photo up of Beckwith so you know who we're talking about. And uh, great stories. Um, just uh, hearing the accounts and the, the stories of uh, Beckwith in Vietnam, uh, working with the Special Forces and Project Delta. Yeah. Yeah. That was incredible. Incredible story. It's amazing. Yes. So he was, uh, he was around in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And uh, didn't you say he, he, he passed away about 1994? Yeah, 94. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, passed away in Austin, Texas. And he's buried at the National Cemetery in San Antonio. Have you noticed that almost everyone badass comes from Texas? Or what comes to Texas. I don't think he was from Texas, oh, he's not. but he moved here. Yeah. 
So yeah. there well, you that, go. That works. You know, yeah. you know, Chuck Norris here too. Yeah, like Clint Emerson. Who? Clint Emerson. He's a Navy SEAL from this yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's still here. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, Lone Survivor. Okay. Marcus okay. Luttrell. Yeah. He's from Houston. That's crazy. There was uh, that movie. Uh, what was it? The one with. We'll spike. There was a, a a movie where this one soldier's team got killed, like their helicopter crashed or something mm. in Afghanistan or something like that. And it was like one guy who had to survive. One survivor. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. That uh, Mark Wahlberg in it? I don't know. I think so. Yeah, that's Lone Survivor. There was a movie like that, and I don't know if it is Lone Survivor, but apparently it was Kyle's brother. Oh. Isn't that weird? It is weird. That's oh. interesting. Yeah, he was, uh, he's in the, or he's like a Green Beret or something. Yeah, he says so. That's cool. So, <clears throat> uh, a little bit about Special Forces. The last two guys we've mentioned were Special Forces. Mm -hmm. Uh, for those of you that are not aware of what Special Forces done uh, has done, or what they do, um, they're, it, they specialize in unconventional warfare, which is basically their force multiplier. They are sent into a country and they try to train the locals and certain militias to fight against the antagonist uh, force, if you will. Yeah. And so it's, they're badass, a f fantastic organization in the fact that they basically turn the locals against you. They go in, turn the locals against you to get them to all fight you. Really? And it's, there's plenty of books about them. A fantastic group. That's fascinating. That's like uh, other things that I don't want to say. Mm -hmm. They're currently going on. So, amazing war hero, amazing story, and... Travis is researching and doing great work on this, and uh, I think we're going to have some pretty awesome people on each episode now. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and there's plenty more. There is countless numbers in the history of our nation. There's countless badasses that mm -hmm. have done extraordinary things. Whether it's military, law enforcement, firefighters, you no, know, some doctors. I mean, whoever maybe if they've done something heroic that's actually made a difference and something badass uh, will we'll be in here now now people know which everyone that's watching this all like two of you know the reason people get so upset when they see this country going to shit is because there's been so many people that have sacrificed yeah for this country there's been people that have lost limbs lost lives lost loved ones mm -hmm. to give you the right to bitch about it to talk shit about this country Yep. So, shut the fuck up. Let's have a moment, a couple seconds of mm. silence sure. for this hero. Sure. Well, we'll probably get bitched at for having that silence, but... Uh, if they don't like it, they go fuck off. Yeah. It's for a good reason. You know, I heard a, I heard a thing the other day, mm -hmm. and it was talking about 9-11. And the, did you see that video? It was kind of a popular one out where this guy in the military was saying... Um, it, one of his team members was like, if we know we're going to die... You saw this one? Yeah. Like, if, if, you, if we know we're going to die when we go into this battle, why are we going? Mm -hmm. And the guy said that for that mother that dropped her kids off at school and went up into the Twin Towers mm -hmm. and then jumped out of it because that was the only best option when it was on fire and to hold her skirt down when she hit the ground just so she had some sort of decency left, he said, that's the reason we're going in. And the guy was like, okay. You know, like that. Absolutely. Yeah. That was... Uh, fantastic video we saw on that yeah well that's that's one of the reasons we created cigars of valor is yeah. 
is we want to honor those people. We want to honor the heroes that defend our rights, defend our safety, mm -hmm. our freedom every single day. Yep. Basically for free. <laughs> yeah. We talked about the Connecticut, different types of Connecticut wrappers. Yeah. The Connecticut, Connecticut shade, Connecticut broadleaf. Do you have any more cigar wisdom? I do. I have a plethora of half-assed wisdom. Have, what have you learned lately in cigars? You learned anything there? Um, not to put me on the spot. I can't think of it. Well, but let me recall from my archives. So, hey, what was the? Uh, so tomorrow we're giving out the new one. We're giving out that special one. Yeah. So if you come by and you get how many cigars? If you buy four, yeah, it was four to six. Right? It was either four or five. If you buy four or five, you get one free. You buy eight, get two free. You buy ten, you get three free. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have one of the freebies. One of the freebies will be that. Yes. Nice. And we're also so going to be raffling off a uh, bottle of bourbon. And there's also going to be a white elephant there. We're going to be, uh, I figure we just take a bundle, or not a bundle, a, a Exfil pack up there. Okay. And just have it wrap it up and put it in the white elephant. Sure. Because that would be awesome because the, the sample pack uh, has cigars in there. in there. Yeah, we're going to throw a little pell pin in there. Maybe a few scorpions when they open the bag. They come out, sting the fuck out of them. Yeah, that'll be good. But gold plated scorpions. Yeah. The sample pack um, has cigars in there that are not on the shelf there. Really? So that it's kind of a special deal. Mm -hmm. Is all of the. Exfil series in shops? No. So you can only get them online. There's two. Uh, usually the Ace and the Frog are in the shops. Now all the rest of them, like the Raider, the PJ, and the mm -hmm. Night Stalker, uh, they're all online only. Okay. Okay. But if you have not had the Raider, I know a few people have ordered it. And what's the, uh, what's the blend? The Raider! is probably one of our favorite cigars that we have come out with. It is similar to the Espionage as far as having a Sumatra wrapper, but it has Nicaraguan, Dominican, and Peruvian blend, and it's been aged seven years. That sounds decadent. It is fantastic. Beautifully decadent. Yeah, try that cigar. If you haven't tried it, that sucks. Try it. It's amazing. Yeah. So, what do you think of the Ace? How's it smoking for you? Well, the Ace is always absolutely amazing. You know, I remember the first time smoking this, and I was like, damn, this is delicious. And it kicked my ass. The cigar kicked my ass. It's one of the few that actually, the, the one year that we had, yeah. that thing is amazing. And next up is this motherfucker. Yeah, absolutely. Is this right here. That, that one year prototype that we're dealing with. On oh, yeah, level. the new one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one is. That, yeah. that was the original one year that we had, but we couldn't get enough of them mm -hmm. at the time. So now that we can, we got a little bit more. Yeah. We can actually sell them for a little bit. We can't get a whole lot of them, yeah. but we don't have sales that are going to exhaust it. So I had to persuade and pay people to get yeah. this again in the quantity that we got. Yeah. But it was fantastic. It's well worth it because that cigar is delish. I remember when you gave me that Cuban cigar and then you said, smoke the other one first. Mm -hmm. And I smoked that one. And I was like, damn, this is good. And then uh, I smoked the Cuban and I'm like, this is nowhere near as good. Yeah. <laughs> really funny. All right. For flavor, our cigars are absolutely amazing with the amount of flavor that they have. It's a, it's hard to, find, it's hard to find cigars that compete with this. Absolutely. I will say. And uh, I mean, that's honestly why we went with what we got. Otherwise it wouldn't have been uh, worth it in my opinion. If we had shitty cigars and good branding, that's yeah. the point. Make up for the shitty cigars for the beautiful bands on it. Yeah. Which we're working on. We got some new bands coming, right? Yeah, I need to check on it. 
Amazing. Gold, progress. Gold foiling. They're going to be progress. delicious. Yes! So yeah, each cigar after you're done smoking them, mail the, the label back to it. It's 24 karat gold. Not really. We couldn't afford that. I'm telling you, that would make the cigar like 20, 30 bucks a piece. I know. Oh, so yesterday I went and visited one of our future accounts up in Sherman. Oh. That is going to be a badass shop when it's done. We've been talking about it for a while. Yeah, that is. That's going to be cool. It's an old, old building in mm -hmm. downtown Richardson. Uh, not Richardson. Uh, Sherman on the square. Yeah. Um, uh, the old brick with the plasters on the wall. It's just, it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to that shop opening up. Yeah. And he's going to have a big grand opening event and we're going to be there. When? Uh, I'd say probably January. Oh, that's close. Mm -hmm. It's just around the corner. Yeah, they're demoing right now, getting all the, because it was a law office before. Uh, they're demoing everything, and then they're going to do the finish out, which should take no time. Hmm. Basically, just build a humidor and a bar and coat the concrete with a epoxy and chairs and tables. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. We need to visit some shops out in like Fort Worth and stuff, too. Absolutely. We're going to do that after the first of the year because December is kind of a bad time to go sell cigars to shops mm -hmm. because of the taxes and all that stuff as far as inventory goes. Yeah, yeah. And so after the first of the year, we'll, we'll hit it pretty heavy. Uh, I know of another shop that, oh, off topic, Kurt mm -hmm. wants to do an interview. Oh, he does? Yes. I remember him mentioning that. Yeah. Just, we could never negotiate a time. He said, preferably a Wednesday. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. We just have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But we'd have to go to him. Yeah, yeah. He, he's open to that. Okay. I mean, we don't we don't need to bring the light or anything. No, no. Just mic and camera. Yeah. And then uh, it'll be cool if it's in the background. There'll be people and it'll be a different environment. Have people talking shit to us the entire time. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll be background. great. Throwing shit at us. I'll throw that back at him. I was bringing it out. Sure. You know, I'm sure he watched our podcast once and was like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I can only hope. Man. It, it's a certain kind of person that likes this type of podcast. Yeah, I agree. And we recommend it in, we recommend it if you're smoking a cigar because we're yeah. sitting here we're smoking a cigar we're enjoying it it's just kind of awkward if you're not smoking a cigar yeah yeah like we're enjoying a cigar so you just imagine like you're hanging out with us it's kind of like watching porn and not jacking off it's just weird yeah absolutely <laughs> it's the same same type of blue ball feeling you know like <laughs> what we just we're here to massage you, you know, massage your ears and your brain. So just enjoy it. If there's silence for one second while we're taking a cigar, sorry, you'll be fine. Travis froze up for a second. So, fuck! Speaking of square. God damn. Square. If you think we are hostile, That's all I'm saying. I have a special set of skills. And those skills are annoying people. Yeah. And I'm very proud of those skills. Yeah. 
We need to annoy her. I agree. We're going to send certified letters. Certified, <laughs> certified letters and have people subpoena them just to read the letter. Yeah. And it's going to be one cigar. Uh, what I'm going to do is a uh, certified packet. Uh, this, I can't say what I'm going to do. I can't. Just because it'll ruin the surprise. It'll ruin the uh, shock and awe factor. Nothing illegal, of course. Nothing illegal. Nothing to harm or hurt anyone. No, we would never do that. The fuck do you want? What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. Right. Just keep it over there, okay? Just open the fucking thing first. Stand by. Hire the handicap. It's more fun to watch them work. Smoking like shit or what? No, it's great. Okay. It's, it's going out on me. Because I'm not smoking. Smoke? Enough. Well, you're fucking freight training this shit. Look where I'm at. Look where you're yeah, at. Yeah, I know. It's going to kind of slow down. Yeah, slow the fuck down. This podcast is meant so we we're forced to slow down. We're forced to slow down, talk about shit. Talk about what things that we like, cigars, guns, which I'm going to talk about a gun in a minute. And you just have a good time. Mm -hmm. we're, that's what we're here for. We're going to have a good Same to you. Cigars are there to make you slow down and enjoy life. Enjoy it. Because life's too short to not enjoy it. So let me tell you about this thing that Nicole bought for me. It's on its way here. And what is that? An AR pistol. I'm telling you, my favorite AR I ever you want, you want another one? Cigar? I want to smoke in my shit? No, it's fine. Okay. I'm just ashing it also to mash everywhere. My favorite AR I ever owned was this Ruger AR pistol I bought. It is amazing. Amazing gun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just the like, you know, you fire, I fired longer ARs my yes. whole life mm -hmm. at the range. And nothing compares to having a short barreled AR because it's just, it's just a low profile. You know, it's just, a, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's such an awesome gun. How, how many inches is that barrel on yours? 10? 10 or 12? Okay. I think, yeah. 12. I think mine's 11.5. Uh, yeah. And it also has the carry handle on top. Oh. It looks like the old school car 15. Really? Mm -hmm. It's going to be badass. That's cool. Uh, so we got that coming. Uh, so have you shot a 300 blackout? Nope. I neither Actually, have I. I've been wanting to shoot one. Oh. Uh, when I went hunting on Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but I didn't shoot it. I okay. think it was a 300 blackout. Mm. It's kind of a big round. It may not have been three hundred like that. It was a big round. Because I've never shot one. I've never even. It almost looked like a like a little bit smaller than a three hundred eight. I don't remember what that was. For those of you that don't watch this, uh, could you please enlighten us, uneducated fucks, about a three hundred blackout? No, we. We just want to know some information about it. You see, I like that gun, but I'm sort of like practically minded about it that I wouldn't, I would own one just to go to the range, mm -hmm. but like in a situation to where you need ammo, mm -hmm. an abundance of ammo, there's not going to be any fucking green or blackout that's a good point. anywhere. Good point. So that's, that's, why I prefer just to have the regular AR. Five, 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 six, two, yeah. two, three. Absolutely. Let's prefer. Or 308. I would love a 308. Uh, an AR-10, fuck yeah. Dude, that's that's probably my next gun. I want to do an AR pistol, 308. Mm. Jesus, fuck. Yeah. An AR pistol, 308. <laughs> yeah. That'd be intense. That'd be fun. That's what I want. An AR-10 pistol. That'd be insane. Freaking awesome. You know how loud that fucker would be? It would be, be fucking loud. 
and it would be the shit. Like two drum mags, put a 500 millil milliwatt laser. Oh, well, just you're gonna kill them with the laser first before you <laughs> burn a hole through yeah. their clothes and shoot at them. Remember that fucking laser you had back in the day? <laughs> that it was so powerful, it was light up the dust particles going through the air. Yeah, you'd watch it burn the dust as it went out. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I would need another laser. Um, I think it was like 50 bucks. Really? Yeah, that's it. Now yeah, there's more powerful ones, the same price now. All right. So they don't like selling the high powered ones because of idiots the, like us. Oh, no, all the fucking idiots go outside and they point them at planes flying over. Oh, yeah. Fuck those guys. God fuck. damn. Like, I just don't understand like how dumb. Like, you have to be to do something like that. It's just, it, it's insane. That's just, uh, why would you do that? Past modern society. It's just, I don't, uh, coming from someone that flies, I fly. I don't understand why someone would want to do that. They know that's going to fucking, that's going to fuck that power up. Yeah. Well, some people, they don't think about that. And some people think it's funny. It's going to be funny when that Cessna 182 comes flying straight at their ass. I'm going to do that. If I'm flying a plane and someone shines a laser at me and I go blind, I'm flying at them. How you, if you're going to go blind, you're not going to fucking see him. I'm going to feel it. All right, Daredevil. I'm going to get the co-pilot to tell me where to fly. Where are fly. they? Where are they? We're going to fly. Why don't you just have him fly it then? Yeah, we'll have him fly straight <laughs> into them. Jesus. Crash the plane like the Andrew Tate Grand Theft Auto. Oh, my God. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> there was one, and it was like when Andrew Tate sees you... Uh, what was it not smoking a cigar or mm -hmm. something like that and he flies a fucking plane into the <laughs> ground and gets out and beats the guy up that was funny uh, so those are such amazing videos yes did you see where he actually saw it like he got uh -uh. He, he was on the stream no i haven't I seen it that. to you he's on a like his live stream and someone sent him the video to watch it and he's watching he's like why the fuck would i drive my bugatti on the beach <laughs> this is so funny <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, man. So, uh, you're going to talk about this for a second. Tomorrow evening event, yep. December 10th. If you're cool. El Dorado McKinney, Christmas party, sweaters. If you're cool. Cigars. I tell you what, if they walk up to us, if someone watching this podcast comes to the event tomorrow, walks up to us and tells us, Eat shit. What are they going to get? A cigar. Yeah, we'll give you a free cigar. If you tell us to eat shit, we'll give you a free cigar. I agree. That's going to be excellent. We're going to have 500 fucking people show up now. Yeah. It's going to just happen to go viral at that time. Cigar company out of Dallas issues a challenge. Yeah. We're going to have old men coming in there. Eat fucking shit. Nope, you said it wrong. What do you mean? You, talk, you said fucking. <laughs> fucking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no fuck. It's invalid now. Just, all right, fine. We're going to make it a stipulation. Uh, just uh, terms and conditions, if you will. Just so we don't get fucked on this deal. Yeah. If you show up in the first hour and say eat shit. Yeah. Or a minimum, a maximum of three people. And there you go. Maximum of three people. Because we're not going to give out 500 free cigars. Yeah. We're just going to not do it. Tell you to go fuck off. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Tell you what, you can buy four cigars and we'll give you one free. There you go. You can still tell us to eat shit. Yeah, you can tell us to eat shit twice. All right. Um, well, I think we should wrap this up and do a little stupid video and sure have a little ending to it. And, sure. Uh, From okay, what the cigars of our studios productions, yeah, from entertainment, the large 6,000 square foot cigars of valor warehouse. We <laughs> wait, wait, what would you say? This is like 25 square feet, not even <laughs> <laughs> from the cigars of valor warehouse. 
We'd like to thank you for your business. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for loving a amazing country that, that gave us the freedom that we have. And uh, thank you for hearing us out. And we'll see you guys tomorrow at the event. All right, so here's the deal. I have a confession to make. I don't know what it is that I'm going to confess, but I just have a confession to make. I don't know what it is. I have killed a lot of people on Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. A lot of people. So your stats are in the global uh, uh Probably not. Uh, no, fuck no. Um, but they're up there. Uh, I know I've killed quite a few people. And I enjoyed it. I laughed as I did it. And I'd do it again. All right, so due to uh, the lack of participation we're experiencing right now, uh, we're going to stop these shorts and uh, we're going to go on an endless rampage of screaming and profanities. No, just, this is not going to make any sense. It's just going to be a bunch of screaming and profanities and just random shit. So, hope you like it. I just, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah. Here's the deal. I just can't do it, Captain. I just can't do it. I just can't do it, Captain. I told Martha that if she wasn't such a bitch, that we'd have more customers come in. You know, every time someone comes in the fucking door, Martha has to go and say something fucking stupid. Are you even listening? What are you doing? All right. Thank mm -hmm. you.